Hello developers, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about data fetching with the suspense and the error boundaries that can make our code much more declarative and easy to read. Um, it's not changing the way fundamentally how the network is working or like a data fetching asynchronized uh, data fetching with your component. It's not going to change that, but with the new approach, um, it's maybe not a new approach, but uh, with the suspense API and the error boundary. Um, and you can make your code much more readable, more declarative, and very easy to maintain as well. So I will go through, I will walk you through a sing simple um, API, we we'll call that AI code of the day. Um, application is very simple, just it has one single network uh, request. And once we have the request, uh, request data or show a uh, code of the day, it will work with the remote API. But that's not the most important part. Uh, that's how we write the code is um, more important in this uh, video. So uh, let's get started. The example we are going to use is uh, code of the day. So if we open up the application, it's simply uh, um, fetching a remote server um, it's called code, I think. Um, let's refresh. So um, it will call the API code will uh, get a random code limited to one. It's just refreshing one. But because we're in a dev mode, um, React will, you know, um, takes two um, network requests, but we, we can ignore that. That's totally fine. Um, and the point is, like uh, currently, we will when the page is loading, you can see there is a loading indicator. It's very fast. If we slow it down and do the refresh, um, hopefully we will see the um, the loading um, screen, uh, loading you know full back. Um, yeah, let's give it a try. Yeah, you see here, it's loading, and after that, it will get the data and it run the data. So uh, the code is very simple. You probably can imagine how I write the code. So basically we have a use effect and inside the use effect, we, we um, fetch the codes and uh, now initially we set the loading status as true. And then we get the code, which is defined as, uh, is, yeah, it's nothing fancy but a fetch. Uh, if something went wrong, it will throw. Otherwise, it will return uh, re response to JSON, which is a pretty uh, standard way to to do the fetch. And uh, we will, you know, we have the if we have the data, we will set the code as, as a result. Otherwise, we set the arrow. Um, and the fa even finally, that means it will be executed anyways. Uh, we set the loading as false. And in the uh, use effect, we fetch codes. And when it's loading, we run the loading. When it's arrow, we run the arrow. Uh, and uh, um, when we have the data, we will you know, iterate it through the array and uh, render the, uh, the content. That's pretty much uh, how you normally do a uh, data fetching in React, right? And uh, we could use some libraries like uh, SWR, uh, let me quickly show you how we can do that with uh, use SWR. <clears throat> so if you don't know yet, uh, the SWR is a uh, red hooks for uh, data fetching. Uh, it's pretty popular and it's supposed to suspense API, you know, the, the, the latest one. And there's a, a bunch of other stuff. And uh, to use that, it's pretty much like um, it handles all these states uh, management for us, like loading, error handling, the data <coughs> will be uh, fetched and maintained automatically by the hook. The only thing required um, from our developer is the fetcher, which is a get function. And uh, once we have that, we can simply use the status uh, for pretty much like what we have for the um, in our local. And um, Say we have, let's say we have um, um, get codes, which is a fetcher. Uh, we have already seen this. Uh, it's doing nothing but a fetch. 
And in the um, uh, component, we can use the data and we rename it as quotes, which is by default, we give it empty array. And uh, the arrow and the loading is, you know, the same as before. And uh, if it's loading, we do this. Otherwise, if it's arrow, we do this. And then once we have the data, we render. So this, this is pretty much the, pretty much like the standard way of um, doing the data fetching. Uh, nothing wrong with it, I would say. It's pretty, pretty much exists in every um, code base especially before the Suspense API is available for um, um, for data fetching. So, you know, Suspense, it used to be a good way for, um, what do you call that, the um, code split. It works well with uh, lazy loading. Uh, I have another video about the loading stuff. Um, if you haven't yet, please check it out. So basically, it's um, uh, let you display a fallback until the children has has hasn't been uh, rendered yet. Um, but it yeah, so the new suspense like after React eighteen, um, we can use the uh, suspense with any kind of data fetching, not only the code split, you know, laser loading stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, we kind of have the language um, level support for data fetching. Um, but as, as mentioned in the uh, um, document, uh, the suspense able data source will have the subsequent component. Uh, that means there are only a few content existing. It's still in the experiment. But I believe it will be very soon. It will be um, um, production, um, what do you call it, production ready. Um, but yeah, at the moment we need to use some kind of library to um, that support the suspense um, data fetching. Uh, SWR is one of the library that support the suspense um, data fetching. That's uh, pretty cool. Let's have a look at how the um, suspense enabled data fetching looks like. So I have a component called Q, um, code suspense. So in a code, you can you can see we only have the data or like we only care about the data inside the component. And uh, we do this by, let me I minimize the file explorer. So you say we use SWR uh, with the get code uh, fetcher and configure is suspense true. That will tell the SWR work in a suspense enable mode. Uh, that means in the uh, component, we only care about the data. We don't care about the loading and the suspense and the, and the, the error handling anymore. And uh, that makes the code much uh, shorter. And uh, what we do, and for error handling, we, we use the error boundary. And in the fallback, it will uh, run the, the error component. That means, um, in a calling place, we will wrap the codes component around a error boundary, which handling the error um, scenario. And we also wrap the component around a suspense uh, boundary, which means uh, when the data is loading inside the codes component, there will be a fallback component, uh, there will be a fallback rendered instead. So once uh, uh, React know that the data is ready, it will replace the, uh, the loading with the actual rounded component. Um, and you can see how short the component uh, is. Uh, like uh, previously, it's, it's code, uh, and you do this use F effect, uh, it's loading, it's arrow, and then you do this. And uh, with the Suspense API, the, the, the only thing you care about in the codes is like get the, get, get the data and the render. Anything else is out of your concern. And uh, you only need to wrap it around a, a few boundaries. And uh, you can like shift the boundary in different places and um, make it you know, composable, you can compose multiple suspenses all together 
and uh, different suspense were loading separately. Um, it's of course uh, it, it's need the backend service to uh, support this kind of streaming, but at the end of, but at the end of the day, um, the API will be much more um, declarative. The code you write will be much more declarative, much more intuitive, uh, readable. Um, and uh, it's more like uh, you are writing some React code in the first place. So we don't have to deal with all the if-else logic inside a component, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm currently working on the data fetching tutorial in my uh, website, icodit.com.au. Um, it's called Advanced Data Fetching Patterns in React. Uh, I'm still working on it, it's in progress. Um, but I have already finished a couple of uh, chapters. So if you haven't yet, please uh, check out the tutorial. I will, I will share the link in the description below. And uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and uh, share the, with your developer friends. Um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I have for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next time.